Hey guys, Duke Wayne Lopez here. Uh, we're going to be covering chapters 7 through 9. Um, sorry about the delay, but life. <laughs> it happens sometimes. Uh, I'm doing this the same day as the last two videos. Uh, I'm going to be editing this at home. Uh, if I can get my computer fixed to where it works at home, then you might have the video tonight. If not, then it'll be tomorrow when I'm back in this room again. <laughs> Pretty much I'm living here to study right now because I have no internet at home because my computer is jacked up. But anyways, chapter 7. Chapter 7, you're going to go through your abdominal, behavioral, uh, hematologic, and renal emergencies. So with all of these things here, <clears throat> you're going to cover anything from disease, infection, uh, it, the hematologic is with blood, renal with kidneys, things like that. Uh, with your abdominal, uh, when I told you before to memorize uh, where your organs are located at and everything, this is where it comes into play. Uh, you're going to be covering all your organs all over again. You're going to be covering uh, different pains that they might feel for different organs. Uh, say that your stomach was ruptured. There's different things that can happen with that as well. It all it covers it all in there. Uh, the chapters seven and week seven and eight, they're pretty nasty. So get prepared for some stuff. Week seven it kind of weans you into it, but week eight is like boom nasty stuff. Once when you go into week eight, week eight is when you get into all the nasty stuff. It's gonna be uh, skin burns. Uh, it's gonna go from the regular sunburn to third degree nasty. Oh my gosh, I don't want to look at it. It's gonna go into I had to take a break from this chapter because of what I'm about to tell you guys. It has pictures from degloving of hands, which basically means that something went into the skin and peeled it all off to where it's just like on the fingertips, like up, up over here. <laughs> and all you see is muscles and it it's nasty. <laughs> so prepare yourselves for that one because it gets pretty bad. Um, but they tell you how to treat it and how to transport them, things like that. Uh, with the chest and abdominal wounds, they show you how to treat that as well. That's going to be uh, gunshot wounds where it'll break the ribs and it'll go into a different trajectory and it might exit, it might not exit. What uh, can happen with the bone when it shatters a bone? All the little shards of bone go everywhere and can puncture something. Uh, talks about, I believe this chapter also talks about collapsed lungs because of that. Uh, how to treat for the collapsed lung, occlusive dressings, things like that. The, these chapters are all about dressings, pretty much. How to stabilize your patient and get them to the hospital safely. You're also going to be covering bones. So you're going to learn your bones, you're going to learn your muscles. Uh, muscles weren't too big of a deal, it was mainly the bones that you had to worry about mainly about breaking them so they teach you about different splints to use so if you break your femur there's only one splint that you can use and you can't use it if multiple bones are broken in that leg or further down um, they show you different ways to splint uh, they show you different bandaging bandaging techniques different ways to uh, pretty much realign bones and stuff like that so that you can transport them if you should do it as well uh, sometimes you don't want to because you might cause more damage to the internal uh, organs and whatnot, muscles, tissue. After you cover those, you're going to go into week 9. Week 9 is about head, neck, spine. Head, neck, and spine, it's going to go through all your vertebrae, stuff like that. Uh, you got to memorize how many vertebrae you have. Uh, you got to Memorize the different sections of the spine, so you have lumbar, cervical, all this other stuff. Uh, the sacrum, the crossix, and oh god, I forgot it already. Uh, <laughs> okay, but I forgot the, the the next one, but there's like 33 or 34, I can't remember now. I've been studying for like the past six hours, so forgive me. <laughs> But you're going to be covering all that stuff with the spine, the head, so you get like a brain damage going on and blood's bleeding into your brain. How your heart compensates for it by raising your blood pressure to get oxygen into your brain, which draws your brain down towards the forehead of magnum, and then that compresses the spine and then does all this other stuff, then your heart 
uh, lowers our heart rate <laughs> to compensate for that. And pretty much from what they told us is that that's the only time when you want to perform interventions to stop your body from trying to fix itself. Otherwise, just let your body do whatever it does. Um, so this is the one time that you wouldn't do it. But that's a whole other thing. You'll, you'll learn that once when you're in school. Um, but remember the foramen, foramen magnum? I'm going to say it wrong every single time. Foramen magnum? That's the only hole in the back of your skull. And that's where your spine starts at. I'm going to be learning about all that. It's a very easy chapter, really. Um, I think I'll probably have to say chapter 7 was the hardest out of the three that I'm discussing. And really, it wasn't even all that hard. Uh, these chapters here, uh, you're going to feel like if you're going back over it, it's just more detailed. So week 9, you're going to cover multiple systems trauma. So with multiple systems trauma, you're going to determine the priority of your patient. You're going to determine if you can uh, assess them there or if you have to get them off the scene into the hospital. Um, it's all about just determining severity. Uh, you're also going to be determining your interventions. If you are going to be on scene, then you have to determine what interventions you should use for that specific patient. It's going to cover the trauma score all over again from the Glasgow. So pay attention to that, learn it, try and memorize it if you haven't done it by now. It's most likely going to be on your test. It's also going to be a part of uh, determining the priority of transport. So are they going to be high priority, low priority? Do you have some time to do the assessment and everything and take care of them? You don't want to splint people to death. Uh, if they have to go, then you have to safely get them onto the ambulance and go get them to the hospital so they can get the proper treatment. But what this is mainly, it feels like a recap. It all feels like a... It all feels like a throwback. <laughs> so that, that chapter there, it'll be easy for you. All these chapters are going to feel like if you already did them before, but you haven't. <laughs> if that makes any sense. I'm sorry, it's been a while. Uh, I've been studying for five or six hours, so my mind is kind of... <laughs> but, um, crap. But yeah, just make sure that you study everything. All these chapters are actually really important, even though you're, you feel like if you're going over them again, there's information in there that you haven't covered. And there's information there's more information that you have covered already it just gets more specific so don't let it deter you from studying just as hard make sure that you study just as hard or even harder because there's these little nitpicky details that you have to know make sure that you know all your bones you know what they're all called uh, make sure that you know your muscles they're not as important as the bones but you still want to know them make sure you know your organs the organs are extremely important to remember. You gotta remember them, remember which ones are hollow, stuff like that. <clears throat> remember what they do. That's not covered in this chapter, I believe. No, it wasn't covered in this one. You gotta check back in the, the previous chapters. But just know which ones are hollow, where they're located at, if they're uh, closer to the back, or they're closer to the front. Uh, that helps out with your patient assessment a lot. Because say you have a bullet shot in the abdomen, you got to know which organ is in that area so that you can determine that's part of your whole multiple trauma system. So all these chapters fit in together. So it was actually pretty well planned, even though I didn't plan it, but to have these three weeks in sequence together on one video. Mm, I don't think that there's anything else. Uh, hypothermia and stuff. That's, that's where we have. Yeah, it's environmental uh, emergencies. I can't talk. I can't concentrate. Yeah, leave a comment below. Leave a comment below. Uh, 
like, subscribe if you'd like. Uh, I'm going to be trying to keep these videos going, even with all my computer issues. But, uh, yeah, hopefully I can get... I'm actually up to date after I upload this one with my classes again. So... I haven't taken the test for week nine yet. That's how up to date I finally am. So I'm going to take the test for that. I'm studying for the next chapters already. So those would be in about a week and a half. I, I have the test for those. So hopefully I can just start doing it week by week depending on my internet issue. I really appreciate all the comments that I've been getting so far. Uh, I love hearing that other people are going into EMT, and I really hope that you guys uh, keep in touch with me. Send me private messages, whatever you like. Uh, I would love to hear different experiences to see how different schools actually uh, work together. I think it would be pretty cool to see everybody's different stories, uh, their different clinical stories, stuff like that. So if you write me, I'll write you back as soon as I see it. I'm pretty sure my brain's shutting down on me because of how this video is going. <laughs> it's probably gonna require a lot of editing. So, I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go. Okay, but, uh, I can't think of something. <laughs> I got to go home. All right, but that's about all the time that I have. Uh, I'm kind of losing my mind inside this room. I've been in this room for way too long. So, I'm going to have to end this video uh, shortly. But I would like to say thank you guys for subscribing, thanks for watching my videos, and thank you for your comments especially. I hope to he keep hearing from you guys. Uh, I think a lot of you guys are starting in February actually, so that's going to be great. I can hear about you all this first day in a little bit over a month most likely. You guys are probably starting once when I graduate, which is amazing, because then I get to see you all's entire experience <laughs> while I'm trying to get a job. So... That's going to be interesting. Maybe we'll make some more videos and see how I do in the workplace. <laughs> well, until next time, guys. I'll see you soon. Peace. Can I let out? Right? Okay. Well, that'd be good. Is that good? You got two fingers? All right. Good. And you guys think that's tight enough? I think maybe the yellow is too tight. <laughs> I think that's not tight enough. No such thing as too tight. The green's probably not tight enough. Neither is the red. That's why we want to, like, we always review. Just like, you know, if you don't tie a knot, tie a lot. Yeah. You teach your firemen. Uh, you know, we always want to right. dress and make sure we're good. So. All right, so we're good. We're not going to put him on the board, oh, but we man. are going to. Well, I mean, we can try. We should do put it. Put him on the board. Oh, oh yeah. Right. Where's the, the problem? Right, is, I got to put this away then.